All right, we're moving on to the fourth video in this series. Uh, we've got Sircot installed, we've got rules updated, and we've processed PCAPs to confirm that Sircot is working because it's generating data. Take a moment to hit that like and subscribe button. Don't hesitate to leave a comment or question below as well. Okay, let's get started. Uh, before we jump into detonating real malware, I figured we're right here in a continuation of the last video, we might as well clean up some of these error messages up above. So for example, um, emerging dash ICMP underscore info dot rules. I'm gonna copy that into the clipboard and you can see there's a number of these um, error messages about opening rules files. So let's open, I'm gonna use Visual Studio Code. This is, uh, we, we do need to be an administrator in order to edit this file. And uh, we'll open up the, the YAML file. I'm just gonna paste in the name of that rules file. And you'll see um, here is the default rule path. So that's where we dropped our rules from the earlier videos. And then here's all the rules files. So had we wanted to just add the, the singular rules file, all we'd have to do is get rid of all of these other entries, or at least any of them that aren't relevant, and add an entry for that one singular rules file. That's probably actually the easiest thing to do uh, moving forward here. But in this case, um, we have a file that is not present so we can use a hashtag to comment that out. And if we go back to our Suricata instance here, let's see, we have emerging policy.rules. So we can search for this one as well. And uh, we can just comment that one out. Now we can save the file. And if we go back to our command prompt, run our script, you'll see that well, we've cleaned up the output here a little bit better, right? So we could continue with that. Um, now there's this, whoo, there's this message uh, about the threshold.config. Um, you can go ahead and, and create that if you want, even if it's just an empty file, uh, but that's just gonna to deal with thresholding information. That, that controls how much an alert will generate. And, and so it's a way to sort of tune and, and fine tune and, and help uh, basically your analysts, your, your SOC analysts not get inundated with any particular rules, maybe some rules that, that are, are, are kind of noisy. Um, Okay, well, let's get on to then actually running some real world malware here. And I'm gonna grab an executable, uh, very similar to what I did um, earlier with the PCAP. So we can go to places uh, like any run or triage or any, any place that provides you with, with your actual malware to download. Abuse.ch is another great resource and actually download the sample for analysis. Now, um, we need to be careful here. I'm assuming that uh, everyone that's going to want to, to follow along with this step has a basic understanding of, of safe malware handling. Of course, part of why we're in a Flare VM is because we are trying to detonate malware in a safe environment. So if you're not sure, you're not comfortable, then I would suggest you know just following or just watching uh, and doing a little bit more research until you are comfortable and you have a safe analysis environment set up. Um, now from here, I'm not gonna open up everything that I usually have available to me um, just because I want to keep this demo focused on Suricata. So I'm going to open up System Informer. That way when I run the sample, uh, hopefully we can see, I can you know more easily observe the process activity to see if it's still running, if it's terminated, maybe something abnormal has happened. Uh, we'll just tuck this over to the side. I'm going to leave this console open because we're going to use this in order to run the malware. And then I'm going to start FakeNet. And you can see that in the Flare VM, it is the little FN icon down below. Uh, now with FakeNet, all I want to see is that it's starting to process traffic. Um, and you know, in normal situation here, anything that creates additional network noise, such as a browser, well, maybe we'd want to stop that. But just since we have it open, oh, there we go. You can see. Um, is, uh, as I was just gonna say, uh, we can go to a website and you'll see that FakeNet will handle the DNS as well as then the underlying TCP session. And in this case, because it was HTTP, we just get a default HTTP page. So um, a lot of times things that make noise, especially network traffic, since that's what I wanna capture and analyze like a browser, we wanna, we wanna close those, right? Um, so to stop FakeNet, you just gotta get your cursor on the window here and hit Control C. And you'll see, hopefully, uh, that you get a stopping message. This exception here is just happenstance. That had nothing to do with me trying to stop it. Uh, but Control-C, trying to stop it. Now, uh, you may have noticed if it says select up here on the top, 
That means that the console is frozen. It's, it's not scrolling so that you can analyze content within the, the command prompt. And so you can hit escape, you see it select went away and that'll allow sort of activity to resume. So if you, if you're trying to, you know, bring focus to the window and you're hitting control C, but it's selected, then you need to hit escape as well. And then that should allow it to start and, and finish handling those, those interrupt or those termination commands. Uh, okay. Once this is closed or once we're, we've stopped fake net, uh, then we can close it and you'll see over on the desktop here, we have fake net logs. And now we'll have our packet capture, our PCAP. All right, so that one wasn't for anything that we wanted. I'm gonna delete that just so it's out of the way. There's also a report that gets generated. Uh, we can just take a look at that real quick while we're here. Um, and you'll see that this is really pretty handy because it's gonna show you network traffic associated with the process activity. Right, so here you can see uh, Chrome.exe and some HTTP requests that it generated. So uh, that's, that's pretty helpful, but Let's get to our malware. All right, so I'm gonna run FakeNet again. Give it just a few seconds here. Okay, it looks like it's running and capturing and responding to network traffic. Uh, we've got System Informer open here on the side and now we can just run our malware. So injector v2.5.exe, that's just the name that the malware had when I downloaded it. Here we can see that it is in fact running and you'll notice that there is a bunch of injector.exe is generating a lot of requests. So here's something uh, disobey-curly.sbs, story-tense-faz.sbs, um, yeah, as you can see here. So we're definitely capturing some activity. Now, um, it looks like the process terminated. So what we can do now is go ahead and we can stop fake net by issuing the control C. And the last thing we need to do is well, at least in this, for these videos, is we wanna see if uh, we generated or we can identify any network alerts just simply based off of the network traffic. So uh, the full path here is for fake net is C tools, fake net, fake net version, and then there's our PCAP. So now we can run Suricata with that PCAP that we just generated using network emulation in a VM that is not connected to the internet. So that's always going to be uh, a potential limitation is that we're not connecting to the internet. So we're only gonna see some of the network traffic. But as you can see here, um, this might've been actually quite helpful because we have some alerts for Luma Stealer and there are some different DNS queries. So it looks like the DNS is actually the alerts that are generating here. Um, and we saw quite a bit more, right? So maybe this is an opportunity then to do a little bit more research and write a custom rule or two or three. So um, so we'll do that in the next video. But here you can see, again, the goal of this was just to show you how we can use our Flare VM, not connected to the internet, um, using network emulation through FakeNet and Suricata to process a PCAP and potentially generate some alerts. So pretty cool. So in the next video then, we'll talk about custom rules.